Hello, everybody. This is Richard Curtin with another installment of the Rose Room Toilet Interviews with special guest from Chicago, Illinois, Mercedes Tyler. How are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I am. I'm really good. We've had a really good week. You've had a really fun time here. Tell us a little bit of why you're here. Um, because I love Dallas, Texas, and I come here to get some garments made by the one and only J.D. Martin. Um, I get jewelry from Dragon Lady, and I get to work with the illustrious cast of the famed Rose Room. The famed, yay! <laughs> yes, we, we, we love having the girls from, from Chicago and all over the country come and play with us. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do in Chicago. Um, I do a number of things. I host Bingo uh, for four years now at Spin Nightclub on Tuesdays. On Thursdays, I host an s and burlesque fetish night with alternative music at Roscoe's. And then I work at a restaurant in Wicker Park called Francesca's Forno um, every other night of the week except for Monday. You're a busy girl. I am. And you have, um, you have competed in several systems. You are a former... Continental Plus. Mm -hmm. You've been first runner-up to All-American Goddess two years. Is that two years in a row? Two years in a row. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what? second runner-up to uh, US of A at Large two years ago. And, and we've talked a little bit about you going back to US of A at Large. Are you still planning to do that? Um, it is in my future, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I have said before that I would rather be fifth or sixth place than first runner-up, that I feel like first runner-up is like, you know, the Grapes were right here, and you are just about to grab them, and just not, just not close enough. How did how does it feel to be first runner up twice? Um, it depends on the situation. If you're looking for validation by winning a pageant, then it's you could take it one way. But if you realize it's a contest, there are 40, 30 to 40 girls there. Only one of them is going to go home a winner then, I mean, it's just pure logic, you know. First runner-up to me is not an insult unless it's in a bad situation, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 clear. Thus far in my life, in my career, I've not had any bad or negative first runner-up situations. You know? I saw your first runner-up to Whitney. I, I saw, the, I saw the, the DVD of it, and you were sickening. You were really, really good in the pageant. Um, I just feel like it's, I just, I know that you were just two points away from winning. Um, do you think that two points is going to haunt you for the rest of your life? It would haunt me. Absolutely not. And simply because in that particular case, it's, you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Whitney is a legend in our industry, and I've looked up to her. I remember being a young, you know, young boy um, going to Entertainer of the Year, and I've seen Whitney Page compete since I started doing drag. So two points away from the legendary Whitney Page, there's no insult there, yeah. you know what I mean? You're, you're absolutely right, there and is I, no insult. I'm confident in my own ability to entertain and to compete, and to stand neck and neck with that lady all weekend long, have a great time, the sisterhood that we had, no shame at all. Love it. Um, so, uh, US of A at large, are you going back? Definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, we've talked a little bit about the new car that you're going to buy. What are you thinking about? Um, a Nissan Juke. I'm taking a year off from pageantry. I will not be doing any pageants until next year, um, probably summer, fall, somewhere around there. This year, I'm spending some money on me. I've spent about 10 grand each year for the past four years doing pageants. I've had a great time. Um, of course, you know, I'm fortunate to be a Miss Continental Plus, and that kind of made, that kind of smoothed it all over. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You Once know, you win know. one, you know, and then the quest for two, yeah, but, like but you I always have know. the win. I, like, I'm hungry for more, but I, I'm not hungry for that first one. There's a difference in the, in the hunger, you know what I mean? Yeah. This year, I'm logical. I work very hard. I think it's time to spend some money on me. And I want a new car so I can travel over the Midwest and drive to Texas and things like that, you know, save myself some money on flights. Um, I want, you know, more costumes, more jewelry, maybe some body modification, you know, little things like that. Lashes, and you gotta you always have to have lashes. Lips and lashes. What are your What's your advice to a girl that's going to All American Goddess at uh, this weekend? Yes. You know what? My, when it comes to pageantry, any system, 
don't let or don't look for, like I said, validation or definition of yourself from a pageant or a crown. At the end of the day, it is something that we as humans created, gay people created. There's seven people with seven different opinions sitting at a table. They don't know you, care about you, have anything to do with who you are and what you will become. So don't take it personally. Do your best. Be proud of who you are at the end of the day and, and walk out with your head held high, hopefully with a crown on your head. Yeah. But if not... You know, learn, how did I do as a person? What can I do to be my best? And, and who can I find to teach me and to soak up information from? You know what I mean? Yes. It's just be the best you can be. Don't half-ass do something and then at the end of the weekend be like, I was robbed. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. So. My advice is to challenge yourself to do something that you are afraid to do um, and, and really conquer your fears and... and be everything that you want to be and be proud of what you've done at the end of the day or at the end of the pageant. For the longest time in our industry, and you'll know this, pageants were how you got your name out there. Right. If you, were, you got on a video, people bought those videos and that went around the country, that's how they knew of you. That's how these legends that we aspire to be or look up to came into existence. Now, of course, it's different with Facebook and Twitter and all of that jazz, you know, but... You know, I, I don't know. It's just what I'm saying is it just that's how you used to get your name out there. Yeah. So that's where the glory of pageantry was. It was advertisement. You didn't have to be the winner. You were top 12. You were on the video year after year after yeah. year after year. That's how you got your name out there. Yeah. And you got booked. You know, now we have RuPaul's Drag Race and different ways for queens to establish themselves in the industry. But I still believe the old school way. Hard work, perseverance, you know. Pageants. Yeah, pageantry and beauty. You've been listening to Just Keep Breathing on rationalbroadcasting.com, and this is the Rose Room Toilet Interviews with my very special guest, Mercedes Tyler from Chicago, Illinois. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, sweetheart. Talk to you all soon. Bye now. Bye-bye.